Daigle, and you're listening to Pam and Dawn. Hello, and welcome to the special edition of Christmas Movie Spotlight. I'm your host, Dawn Mack, and I'm here with the other half of our co-hosting duo, Pam, and my trusty sidekick, partner in crime, a whole other slew of things I could name, but she's wonderful. Hey, Pam, how are you? Well, thank you, ma'am. I'm doing well, thank you. And you are all of that to me and more. <laughs> and folks, I didn't even have to pay her this time to say it. I just, you must have a whole bunch of What in the world? What? Well, thank you very much. I'm so glad you feel the same way. Um, well, we are excited to bring you our show today, uh, the special edition. We are Excited to welcome the lovely and incredibly talented Kelly Jekyll to our show. And um, it was fun chatting with her, wasn't it, Pam? It sure was. She was a delight. And I know that you guys are going to love hearing everything that Kelly had to say in our interview. And you can see Kelly in the upcoming Lifetime movie, Christmas Harmony, premiering Saturday, November 24th, 10 Eastern, 9 Central. And... Now, we bring you this wonderful interview. Enjoy the show. And thank you so much for calling in today. We appreciate it because we know everybody is always so busy when we have them guest on our show, and we appreciate any time that you can give us to talk with us. You bet. You bet. I'm excited. Thank you. Now, would you share with us and our listeners about who or what inspired you to become an actor? We always get the best answers. (laughs) <laughs> well, it doesn't really seem like I had a choice. I just, I just loved performing so much since I was a little girl, really, that even when the only songs that I knew were lullabies and performances in the living room for my parents and my, uh, you know, brothers, much to their chagrin. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've gotten, I, I hope, a little less obnoxious over the years. Uh, I no longer demand that people uh, watch me perform. But uh, as, a, as a child, I loved, you know, doing skits or songs uh, for friends and family. And so it just it just kind of happened naturally, I think. And then in third grade, I, I had my first solo in our third grade play. The play was called Go and Buggy, and I played a caterpillar that turned into a butterfly, and I had my first solo. And uh, that plus going to see the, I saw the Sacramento Children's Chorus in concert and just thought, oh, that's so cool. So my parents put me in, in choir. And uh, then I found theater in middle school and high school and fell in love doing straight plays as well as musicals. And, and just it forever became a part of my life. That's so cute. I, I love that when kids are in any kind of, theater like that and do plays and stuff. I mean, we've all done it growing up, but some of us just do it in school and then we walk away and never think twice about it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I was part of a pretty magical high school theater program. It was, it's called Jesuit Drama in Sacramento. It's, it's headed by this incredible director. His name is Ed Trafton. And uh, it it has really affected a lot of performers that have gone through the program. Greta Gerwig went through the program, you know, who just did Lady Bird. Chris Sullivan, who's on This Is Us, was in in the program. And uh, I I think that he created such a special environment that made us fall in love with theater that we couldn't shake it after that. Well, you have had an extraordinary career having starred in the Pitch Perfect series of movies and also starring in television shows such as Scorpion and many, many more. Um, what would you consider to be your most challenging role? Oh, my most challenging role. I, I would say my most challenging role was actually in live theater. Uh, I, I played oh. Marilyn Monroe in, a, in an original music called Marilyn the New Musical. And I think that that was my hardest role. One, because she's a real person and an icon. Mm-hmm. And, uh, right. and her life just, she, she went through a lot. And there, there's so many sides of her that people don't necessarily 
know or think about when they think of the poster child. And um, I think that, so, sorry, hold on one moment. Sorry about that. Uh, so I think that was my most challenging role because it went through her life kind of from beginning to end and until her death. And so capturing the stages of her life and the emotional turmoil that she went through on stage, it just, it, I had to reach into the depths of my soul and my capabilities and my uh, emotional capacity uh, and research to, to portray that, to, to portray her in, in a way that I felt was authentic and true to her. Yeah, when you're, you're portraying somebody that's from real life and is somebody that was as tumultuous life as she had, I can imagine that was pretty challenging for you, especially doing it on, in live theater, too. Yeah. Yeah, and it was also the first time that I had to be sobbing and singing at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which uh, I, I texted my friend Ben Platt, who, who played uh, Evan Hansen and Dear Evan Hansen, and he won a much-deserved Tony for that. But I, I texted him and said, how on earth were you able to cry and sing perfectly every night for years. <laughs> right. He said a great, fantastic voice teacher and I swallowed a lot of snot. <laughs> oh, God. oh my gosh. I said, okay, okay. Noted, noted, I'm on it. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. That's too funny. I, and I want to mention something about Pitch Perfect. I watched all the movies, absolutely love them, watch them again and again and again. It's something that you'll watch, you know, forever if you love those type of movies, which I do. Um, but I was just wondering if you um, remember the guy that played Unicycle, Mike Verre. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I was just wondering because... I'm social media friends with him, and I watch him on Periscope, and I'm friends with him on Facebook and stuff like that, and we oh, talk. Right. And yeah, <laughs> so I was like, it was that's initially started watching, you know, the first Pitch Perfect. Um, I wasn't aware of it right at the beginning, and then he said that he was in it. Oh, okay, I've got to watch this, you know. And yeah. that's when I fell in love with it. So <laughs> oh, he still has that. big hair. And he actually has bigger hair now, so. <laughs> oh, my God, he's such a character. <laughs> he is. He's funny. But yeah. speaking of singing, um, you sang the national anthem at the L.A. Rams game, and I know for most singers this is one of the most nerve-wracking songs to sing, and you did it beautifully. Thank you so How much. did you prepare for it? Well, I've actually been singing the national anthem for a long time. I, When I was 16, I auditioned for the San Francisco 49ers. They had this, you know, American Idol had sort of recently come out at the time, so they were doing this big competition where you mail in, you mail in your CD. That dates me, doesn't it? Um, (laughs) A CD with your audition, and then the next round was a live uh, competition on Pier 39 in San Francisco, out in the open for the whole world to see. So I went with my family, and I sang in the first round. I got to the second round, and then they chose eight eight of the contestants to sing at the eight home games for the season. And I was beside myself uh, when they chose me. So, yes, at, at, at 16, I got to sing for the 49ers. And... Ever since then, I mean, I grew up singing it around Sacramento for swim meets and, and all that sort of stuff, but that led to the Sacramento Kings, and then when I moved down to L.A., I started doing the Dodgers, uh, and then so the Rams, it, it, oh, and I, I, I got to do um, 
the home run derby in, in New York the, for the All-Star weekend for baseball, like, it, it's been a trip to get to sing for all of these different sporting events. But I will say, yes, it is nerve-wracking every single time. <laughs> yeah, I can <laughs> and, imagine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because there's such a stigma about the National Anthem, too, that if you screw up the National Anthem, you're sort of targeted. And everybody sees that video if it's televised. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you exactly. mess up. Yeah. So, so there's all, that's all, that's always a fear in the back of my head. Like, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't get in your head about it. But it's, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it's such a, it's such a rush, and there's nothing quite like having that many sports fans cheering for you and for the excitement of the, the game ahead. And uh, it, it, it's, it's a real treat for me every single time. Well, you know, I have to say that just for our listeners, if you go to um, Callie's YouTube, you can see her sing the national anthem. And what I loved is that it, the video did not cut off right at after you were done singing. You know, it showed, yeah. you know, everybody congratulating you, all your friends and everybody that were there and supported you, and it was just so awesome. It was really fun. Of my my dear boyfriend, Mark, who's, uh, as you can tell kind of the video, he's a filmmaker himself. And it was fun for me, too, because it's such a, a rush and a, a blur that I, I didn't really know what happened until I saw the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and for our listeners, Rebel Wilson was there, too. It was so great to see her there supporting you. Yeah, we we Bellas from from the movie just adore each other, and I feel like as time goes on, we just get closer and closer. And at this point, we're absolute family, lifelong friends, and it's it's just it's pretty special. Yeah, I can imagine, especially working, you know, with her like that so so closely. It brings you together. Yeah. Now I absolutely yeah. love your song, My Best Case. Will you be releasing oh, any new music in the near future? Yes, oh my goodness. I'm releasing so much new music, probably not until the new year, but I have, two, I would say about 10 songs that I want to release next year. I have five with my band, Robin Allen. Uh, I actually met Cordy, my band's partner, uh, during Pitch Perfect 3. He's in the band Whiskey Shivers, uh, which played on our USO tour in the movie. Mm, and wow. we met on set, and then we uh, they were doing a show in Atlanta, and we got together just to jam beforehand and ended up opening for the band playing a couple of songs. And then he lives in Austin and I live in L.A., so we just started sending each other songs back and forth via email and GarageBand and Logic and then eventually, after a few months of sending things back and forth, I flew out to Austin and then flew out five more times after that, and all of a sudden we had created a little album together. Wow. Yeah, and we just went on our first uh, tour. We hit Nashville and Atlanta and Middleboro, Kentucky, and it's all been really fast, but we have a great time, and so we're excited to release our music next year, and then uh, I have a songwriting partner here in L.A. as well, uh, named Tom Straley. And uh, we're going to be releasing songs one at a time. And very excited about about both ventures. Oh, that sounds exciting. Or do you have a projected target date of when you're going to release that album? We, I think we we set a call, and I think we're actually going to be releasing one song at a time. Especially because oh, yeah. Cordy and I live in different states, it's just easier to do a song and a video at a time. Mhm. Mhm. And, and uh, yeah, and 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 we'll be, you know, we'll have hard copy CDs to sell at at at, at shows, but I think that our our release strategy will be more single oriented. Well, we are looking forward to that because you're a phenomenal vocalist and. Um, and it should be really good. So, um, well, we'll keep us posted because we will help promote that when the time comes. Thank you. I um, appreciate that. 
Now, many may or may not know you are the great-granddaughter of the Dodgers legendary general manager, Branch Rickey. And in 2013, Harrison Ford portrayed your great-grandfather in the movie 42. Um, Have you seen the movie? And if so, did you feel it was a true-to-life depiction of your great-grandfather? Yeah, you know, well, I got to play a small part in that movie. Oh, okay. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a pretty fortuitous timing that I was sort of making my way as an actress when they, because that that film was slated to be made for years and years, and I'm glad it got delayed because by the time it got made, I was sort of in the scene already. Uh, So I got to play, I I, I play uh, Jackie and Rachel Robinson's um, babysitter. And uh, it it was very surreal having Harrison Ford play Branch Rickey. I I mean, I unfortunately never got to meet my great-grandfather, but I have heard stories since I was out of the womb. And he was an incredible character, and the stories are endless. And so it was... The best experience, I think, getting to sit next to my dad at the premiere of that movie and see his reactions because he grew up with, with Branch Rickey and knew him so well, and he thought he did a fantastic job, and I trust trust his judgment more than anybody. Mm-hmm. Well, that what an honor, though, for you to be able to be in that movie. And, Absolutely. And like you say, the surrealism of that was just probably yes. incredible for you. and maybe brought a lot of that full circle after having hear, hearing about your great-grandfather, you know, your whole life, and then to be able to, you know, culminate that into that moment of that movie. Um, that is yes. indeed a, it was a true, true special time for you, I'm sure. Yes, it was. And that's something that, you know, can be passed down throughout your family, you know, kids and grandkids and so on that never got to meet him and bring your part of your family history with to life, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, not only were you in the TV series The Assignments, but you also wrote one of the episodes. Um, How was that experience for you, and would you like to do more writing for TV or movies? It was a great experience. I, I, I love... I love collaborating with other artists. I just whether it's songwriting or it's theater or film and television. I just I love being part of a team. And uh, the assignment was uh, exactly that. It was an assignment for an, act, an acting class. And that's how it started. And so I got to write and direct and act with the other actors in the class. And I think. From that, we're all still friends. In fact, two people from that class just came to the premiere of Christmas Harmony on Wednesday, and I got to see them. Uh, I would say, you know, I love writing music and, and, and writing songs, and I love acting. I'm not sure that writing for film or television uh or even theater is something that will be in my future. And I think I'm okay with it. I think that I really, I really love being a part of helping somebody create their vision where where writing is their passion and I get to become a player within their work. I think that's really exciting and, and, and that's where I see myself. Well, it definitely it sounds like you you recognize what your strengths and weaknesses are and you play to those very well and um and and you, and those are passions of yours which kind of it, it I won't say it comes easy but at least it's something that you can just kind of dive in and pour yourself into and you kind of know what the the end result will be and um and that's you know it's okay if that's not an area that you might want to go into um because there's so many other things you're doing around that too yeah and i i feel like the the more time goes by the more i find which parts of this industry and which little niche areas don't feel like work to me that just feel like this is what i would want to be doing with my time 
anyway, and what a joy that I get to consider it my job. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, um, speaking of your job, when you get time off from working, what is your favorite thing to do? That's a good question. (laughs) Uh, Maybe the better question is, do you ever get time off? (laughs) Uh, I I will say I'm a a bit of a workaholic, and that's just because I I love what I do so much. Uh, My my boyfriend has to sometimes say, hey, 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 stop it, cut it out. We're going to relax for a little bit. Yeah. Just, just, Just stop working for a minute. And I'm like, oh. Oh, you're right. It's oh, okay. You're right. I need him to tell me to turn off uh, my brain sometimes and just relax. So we, I mean, we love catching up on series on on, on Netflix or going to the movies, which sometimes I have fun justifying as work anyway because I need to be watching them for my job. Uh, right. And I I I love the ocean. In any capacity, whether it it be just going to Santa Monica here and sitting and watching a sunset or traveling somewhere like Hawaii and just the the water calms me in a way that nothing else quite does. Um, And then I just, I adore the people in my life, the friendships that I've had. You know, I've had girlfriends from childhood. I I love visiting my family. I'm, I'm really very lucky to have wonderful souls in my life that I get to maintain those friendships. Oh, that's awesome. And, and you know, when you were talking about, you know, binging on Netflix or going to the movies, the thing uh, this kind of popped in my mind, and that is, as an actress yourself, when you go and you just watch a movie for leisure, is it hard to sit there and not, like, not necessarily critique the whole process, but can you just sit and really just enjoy the movie as a spectator, you know, um, like anybody else would, or is that kind of like a second nature thing? I'm going to say no. <laughs> I think it's a different experience. I think it's it's always a little bit research-based. And, Mm -hmm. and yes, I can absolutely still sit back and enjoy a movie, but there are observations that are made without even realizing it. And especially uh, if Mark uh, and I are watching together, we're both in the industry, and so I don't know how many times during an episode we pause it to have a conversation or did you notice that? Or did you did you see that that continuity wasn't wasn't there? Oh no, he didn't have that on in the last scene. You know, whatever whatever it is, we have a good time just observing and chatting about what we see. And I think that uh, we are lucky to be with each other because we would drive anyone else crazy. <laughs> Well, and you know when when you were saying that your boyfriend was saying you had to have downtime, you've got to step away. When you're doing what you love, you never feel like you're working. So it's it's almost like it, it, you constantly can't shut down because I know myself. If if I ever do that, sometimes I'm thinking, well, what would I do with myself if I just stop? You know? Yeah. But everybody needs that break, and so it's good that you do take those times for yourself. Yeah, there are definite definite times where you just have to turn your brain off, but it it takes a lot for me to want to get there. And I, I do feel, again, so lucky that I'm in a career that I love so much that I can't possibly in retiring. So this is a lifelong call that I want to play all of the roles in every step of the way, you know, and every age spectrum and character that I, I'm excited to get to grow and age with the characters that I will play in the future. Yeah, for sure. Well, speaking of characters, we are looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming holiday movie, Christmas Harmony, uh, which we had mentioned uh, before this, before the interview took place. Pam and I have seen the trailer. We absolutely love this. It looks like it's going to be a great movie. Uh-huh. And uh, what can you share um, with us about your character and the movie without giving too much away? So I, I play Harmony, uh, Harmony Collins, and Harmony definitely starts off pretty soft-spoken, and she revolves her life around her pop star boyfriend, 
who is uh, a little bit self-centered, not particularly <laughs> nice to her, um, which, you know, frustrates me because I'm like, girl, you got to get out of there. But, you know, I'm playing a character. And I do understand <laughs> In the movie, they've been dating for years and years, and sometimes when you've been dating someone for so long, you just get used to the status quo, and you're afraid to get out of it, and you just accept that this is how my life is. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it it takes him breaking up with her and her life kind of going to shambles for her to have to realize what she wants and who she can be without him, and in the process, you know, possibly fall in love with someone who is right for her. Mm. Well, that sounds very good. And, um, you know, and the trailer was just enough, but it didn't give, it doesn't give a whole lot away. So, but it made us just really want to, you know, can't wait for this movie um, to come out and uh, to be able to see it in its entirety. Um so it's going to be a great one, and I think it's going to be one that once people see it, they're gonna. It's going to be their go-to, one of their go-tos every holiday season. They'll watch again and again. I hope so. I, I love the aspect, the original music aspect of it. Uh, Nanea Miata, who also wrote and directed and produced it, she's just a, an absolute star of a human being. Um, uh, they did such a beautiful job with the original music, and uh, people said on the, after the premiere on Wednesday that they came away singing the songs and the melodies, so uh, I was thrilled about that because that's how I felt on set, that I couldn't stop singing the songs. So I'm, I'm really excited for everyone to get to hear that music as well as see the movie. Well, and anytime you pair up music in a Christmas movie, I think it just takes it, you know, it, it wraps it up so many more notches because people love both things at Christmas time. They love all the traditional fare that go with the holiday season, but then music is such an integral part of that. So, um, mm-hmm. so this should be quite exciting to see. At all. Um, I'm just, I can't wait. Um, well, before we wrap up, we wanted to play a little game with you. It's called Five Question Lightning Round, and it's all Christmas Ooh. related. And okay. basically, it just be five questions. There's no wrong answers, and you just answer with whatever comes to mind. Um, and so, if you're ready, we'll get started. Um, the yeah, first question, yeah, the first question is your favorite Christmas tradition. Oh, on Christmas morning, my family we open presents so slowly that. Again, it would probably drive other people crazy, but we <laughs> open presents probably from 9 a.m. until almost 4 p.m. Wow. Because, and not because we have so many presents that, you know, we just can't open them fast enough. No, we open one at a time. We go in order of age. So whether we start with my dad or with me, I'm the youngest, there are five of us. And we take turns picking a present for somebody else underneath the tree. And then that person opens the present. And then we just talk. We talk about what the present is and, you know, who gave it and why they gave it. And it just turns into a whole discussion. You know, we'll go back and forth to the kitchen, refilling coffee or pastries or whatnot. And we we have the process last as long as we possibly can because just – so fun, and uh, I, I just I love how we do Christmas. Well, and you're making some great memories year to year doing that too. Yeah, yeah. But my question is, how do you get the kids to move that slow? Because <laughs> well, the kids one usually one want to are... rip things open and you know go on to the next one. Well, I'm the youngest kid at 29 right now so uh <laughs> well maybe I do well that makes it easier then <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but 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 it is the way that we've we've always done it and I'm sure when I was young when we were all young we wanted to hurry up a little bit but it just it became the norm and just how we did things so, so we didn't really know any anything different yeah yeah well what is your favorite Christmas song Ooh, what is my favorite Christmas song? Um, I can't remember the name of it right now. I, oh, my God, it's hard. I love 
Christmas music so much. Um, well, pick a couple. Pick a few. <laughs> pick a couple. Uh, so I, I used to uh, be a part of this group called the Tinsel Tones where we learned 56 Christmas carols that we could whip out at any moment around Los Angeles. So, yeah, the the the, the breadth of music that I have been exposed to is, is quite large. Uh, I, okay. Here, here's one that gives me chills every time is actually specifically the pentatonic version of Mary Did You Know. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. And that song, you know, is one of those that's not covered. I mean, it's covered, but it's not covered by every single artist that's ever made an album. Um, right. And it's not, the, it's not the easiest song to sing, but it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Um and, of course, the first time I heard Pentatonix do it, I was like, just chills. It was amazing. Their harmonies are crazy good anyway. They but um, but I, to put it to that song, really, oh, my. Right. Yeah. So I have to say, that's, that's my favorite recording, I think. And I also have a special place in my heart for Pentatonix because I was uh, in an, an acapella group called the SoCal Vocals with both Scott Boying and with Ben Bram, who does all their arrangements. And, wow. Uh, so wow. I just, I, I, yeah, we were all in a college a cappella together. So Absolutely. I love Not that they need my support anymore. They're just killing it on their own. They've got grand. Oh. I mean, I'm so <laughs> proud of them. Yeah. Um, they are, and I love their new album that they just released. What last week I think is when it came out. It's just uh, it, unbelievable. It, I mean, you think yeah, they're unstoppable. I know the fourth Christmas album, and you think what can they do that they haven't done already? But I honestly like this one the best of the four, and I've I've enjoyed all of them. But there's just something different about yeah. this. It's just so good. Um, yeah. All right, moving along. Um, what is your favorite Christmas movie? The Muppet Christmas Carol. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, we grew up, we watched it every Christmas Eve for years and years, and I just, well, I love Michael Caine, and I we also love every Muppet movie, but I love how the Muppet movies employ these incredible actors in such serious roles playing opposite Muppets. I just think it's oh, real. No. <laughs> right? It really is. It really is. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next question is: Hot toddy or hot chocolate? Hot toddy. Uh, for I, I would have said hot chocolate for a long time, uh, but I'm I'm vegan now, and it's hard to get a good vegan hot chocolate. If anybody has any recipes, let me know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but a hot toddy also happens to be really good uh, for your for your vocal cords. Mm -hmm. Right. Honey in there. And so uh -huh. I, I feel like I'm, I'm biased towards that these days as well. Oh, yeah. Understandably so. And the last question is white lights or colored lights? White lights, I would have to say. Although I love both. I uh, gosh, uh, my favorite, one of my other favorite Christmas traditions is. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen Lady Bird. She talks about the Fab 40s. It's, it's the, this neighborhood in Sacramento that's just gorgeous. A friend of mine actually just got married on 41st, which is where she grew up, and blocked, down the, blocked off the street and got married in the street because the neighborhood is just so incredibly beautiful. And what they do is they all band together to create the best Christmas light show in all of Sacramento, so you just drive up and down these blocks and see beautiful lights. And, you know, whether they are colored or white lights, they're just stunning. And so I love both. But there's something really magical to me about a bunch of white lights. It's really so beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I agree. I love them both, too. But they're, mm -hmm. when you decorate your tree, it's just white lights. Turn all the lights off in the room, and it's the only thing on. It's there's nothing yeah. like it. Very, we very much. Have, we, we actually have two trees at Christmas. We have our our big tree in the in the living room with white lights, 
And then we always have a miniature tree uh, in the family room with colored lights. So it's always also to me been like the little tree lights or the kid tree has the colored yeah. lights. So it has a, a youthful, youthful feel to me as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, that concludes our five-question lightning round. So thank you so much for playing along. I'm sorry it wasn't very lightning-oriented. I had to take some time with some of those answers. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> there was no wrong answer because there was no time left. So you were fine. <laughs> and the last thing that I have to ask you is, would you like to give a shout-out to your fans and also share with our listeners where they can find you on social media? Yes, uh, I would just say uh, it's so fu- it's so funny to me, like saying to my fans because it just it blows my mind that I even have them. Like I feel so grateful that people in this world allow me and support me in making music and making art, and I just have to pinch myself that I continue to get to do it, and it is because of that fan base and that support that I get to. So I just have to say thank you, thank you for supporting what I do and and for listening to me and, and my voice, um, whether it be through through acting or singing or songwriting. I'm just incredibly grateful. Um, and, oh, and I, you can find me just my name, basically, on Instagram and Twitter, Kelly Jekyll. On Facebook, it's Kelly Jekyll Official. Um, and on YouTube, it's Kelly, Jig- Kelly Jiggle Music. And then my band is Rob and Alice. Robin like a bird and Alice as in Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Rob and Alice uh, is my band. Oh, that's so cool. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. That um, Thank you for sharing that, and thank you so much for your time today. We have greatly enjoyed talking with you and, and just chatting Ditto. about your career and of course, this wonderful movie, Christmas Harmony, that's going to be coming out very soon, and we look forward to that as well. Thank you so much. You're welcome, and and thank you from myself as well, and happy holidays early, I know, but happy holidays you. I, I uh, to you and your family. In my eyes. Yeah, I, <laughs> earlier the better. Mm-hmm, most definitely. You're like Dawn. You're like Dawn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we got we got to celebrate Christmas in April for Christmas harmony, so I'll take it all all year long. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, definitely keep in touch with us and let us know when your music's dropping and any other projects you have coming up. We'd welcome you back anytime. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, don't leave us yet. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Christmas Movies. That's X-M-A-S-M-U-V-I-E-S. And also like our Facebook page at Christmas Movie Spotlight. Don't forget that's spelled M-U-V-I-E-S. And follow us on Instagram at Christmas Movie Spotlight. And don't forget to check out our website, ChristmasMovieSpotlight.com. That's movies with M-U-V-I-E-S, ChristmasMovieSpotlight.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week.